pleased to welcome you to our online Principles of Immunology course. Your immune system provides biological responses that protect you against constant challenges by bacteria, viruses, and other microbial threats. At the same time, poorly regulated immune responses play a role in many forms of disease. So the immunological principles covered in the six units of this course will allow you to understand the biology that underpins almost all aspects of human health. The course units are all taught by our faculty members who combine immunological expertise with a true passion for teaching. In Unit 1, on Immunological Basics, Dr. Jennifer Gummerman provides an overview of the immune system. She describes early concepts of immunity that led to the development of vaccination, one of the greatest public health interventions in the history of humankind, and the reason many once devastating diseases can now be well controlled. She then describes modern immunology, in which we study the immune cells, or leukocytes, that mediate host defense, including how they communicate with each other and where they are found in the body. We will see that we actually have two distinct types of immunity, namely innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Dr. Gummerman describes how these two systems work in a coordinated and complementary way. It's the initial innate response that will send out alarm signals to trigger adaptive responses. Innate responses also work as a stopgap measure to keep you from being overwhelmed by infection while you wait for your highly focused and more powerful pathogen-specific adaptive response to be generated. In Unit 2, Dr. Dana Philpott focuses on the role of innate immunity in host defense. She describes how the skin and mucosal surfaces, such as the gut, provide barriers to infection. She then shows how microbes that get by these barriers are detected and destroyed by innate immune cells how the inflammation that is generated plays a critical role in host defense. Dr. Philpott also provides examples of faulty innate responses that lead to serious and sometimes lethal consequences. In contrast, if we look at someone that has Crohn's disease, the colon is very inflamed and has what we call a cobblestone appearance. There are blisters and these really awful lesions that are present on the inside of the, the intestine. Our third unit, presented by Dr. Michael Radcliffe, is about B lymphocytes of the adaptive immune system and the antibodies they produce. He describes the structure of antibodies, how they bind to foreign entities we call antigens, and how special genetic mechanisms allow production of antibodies specific for any microbial threat. You will see how B cell activation produces a strong protective antibody response against any given antigen. Dr. Radcliffe ends the unit by describing different antibody subtypes and their particular host defense mechanisms. In the second step, the antigen-antibody complex becomes associated with the phagocytic effector cell via FC-FC receptor interactions. In Unit 4, Dr. Thierry Malambe discusses the T lymphocytes of the adaptive immune system. He describes the structure of T cell antigen receptor and the form of antigen recognized by the two main T-cell subsets, namely cytotoxic T-cells that kill infected host cells and helper T-cells that activate other immune cells. In his final lecture, Dr. Malave explains how T-cells that can react against our own cells and tissues are usually eliminated so we avoid autoimmune diseases such as type 1 diabetes and multiple sclerosis. Every day, roughly 5 times 10 to the 7 thymocytes seed the thymus. But we need to remember that with both neglect and negative selection, only a small proportion of those, less than 5%, are going to make it out as mature T cells. In our fifth unit, Dr. Gummerman returns to describe how an adaptive immune response is generated in space and time. You will see how delivery of pathogen components to lymphoid tissues such as lymph nodes allows the co-localization of everything required to initiate the response. Dr. Gummerman also describes the complex molecular interactions required for activation of B and T lymphocytes and how an appropriate response is shaped from a wide range of possible defense functions. In the final unit of the course, Dr. Brian Barber and Dr. Tony Watts focus on specific aspects of infection and immunity. Dr. Barber discusses the design, safety, and impact of various vaccines using examples such as polio, HIV, and Ebola virus to illustrate key points. He also describes various uses of antibodies in the treatment of immune-mediated diseases. 
Remicade and Humira are another pair of antibody therapeutics directed against the same antigen, in this case human tumor necrosis factor, TNF, which is a mediator of the inflammatory response. Dr. Watts describes how constant mutation of influenza virus poses a challenge to vaccine design and raises the possibility that new flu strains may cause widespread infection of global concern. She also considers how we might develop effective flu vaccines in the future. In the case of flu, it means that instead of inducing antibodies that only bind to the hemagglutin of, say, the H1N1 2009 virus, you would have one that could bind to all the hemagglutinins, regardless of their particular structure, and would prevent any virus with the influenza hemagglutinin from getting inside host cells. Each lecture in the course is approximately 50 to 60 minutes, and is presented in short segments. Each segment is followed by a multiple-choice question to test your understanding as you go along. At the end of each lecture, you will find selected highlights and terms that will help you consolidate your learning. For more information about the course and how to register, please visit our website and follow the